what are we talking about here? We have human design. We have nap time witcheries, energetic blueprints. This is nap time witchery when they're born, and this is nap time witchery when they leave this earth. This does not change. This is who they are. What we see colored in here, we call definition. Anything that's colored in there, whether it's yellow, brown, red, black, don't matter, it's called definition. And the definition in your chart, that is who you are. And that is actually what creates your choice mechanism. I jumped into this way too quickly. I need to take a step back. Human design is your energetic blueprints. Human design reminds us of who we are. You know, cars and airplanes, they all have user manuals and repair manuals. That's the same with us. We have our user manual of life. We wouldn't want to be using a different user manual for, you know, something else. Just like, let's just say that we wanted to have the user manual for a pedal bike. Um, but we got the user manual for a plane. It's, you know, <laughs> not going to work. So this is our user manual of life. This is who we are. This is our energetic blueprint, so you can rely on this information from the time you're born, from the time you leave this earth. And when we are born, we are born into a society. We are born into a race, a gender, and we're born into a community that has a set of beliefs of its own. When we go to school, we're expected to be a certain way, so we change ourselves. When we go out into the workforce, we are expected to be a certain way because of our bosses, you know? Maybe we have a car and we are expected to follow certain laws of the road. We can't just be breaking the laws. So we change ourselves. Maybe we did something in our past and it humiliated us and it truly was us, but we vowed to ourselves that we would never do that thing that we love to do because I just don't want to be humiliated again, so I'm just not going to do it. You know, trauma could change us. Maybe you've had a traumatic experience and you have coping mechanisms to get you through the day. There's many different reasons as to why we change ourselves. Maybe we see someone being successful and we try to change ourselves to be like them so that maybe we can see the success that they're having. As we just saw, there's many different ways that we can change ourselves and it happens very easily and it's very easy to lose who we are. It's very easy to get lost and lose touch with who we really are as a person. So that's what we're going to run over today is nap time witchery and who they are as a person. The most important part of this experience today is understanding how this person ends up saying their yes and no. And the point of this person saying their yes and no is so that they can allow their purpose to flow through them by making proper choices for them and their life and their energy and their trajectory. There's nobody else in this world who can make decisions for naptime witchery. Naptime witchery's energy knows what it needs, understands what it needs, and it'll spit out a response back to her to tell her if it's proper for her or not. So this blueprint, this chart here, is going to give us the me mechanisms as to how naptime witchery says their yes and no. If naptime witchery understands their yes and no, and they follow that yes and no, then they allow their purpose to flow through them. So let's talk about that just for a second. That's pretty cool. If we allow our choice mechanism, our yes and no, our choice mechanism is always our strategy and authority. It doesn't matter if we're talking to Naptime Witchery or somebody in chat or anybody else watching this. Strategy and authority is always the way on how a person ends up saying their yes and no in their life. So if we say our yes and no in our life, for us and we follow that yes and no 
we are allowing our purpose to flow through us. Once again, if you say your yes and no, you allow, sorry, and you follow that yes and no, you allow your purpose to flow through you. Your purpose is the incarnation cross, the left angle cross of obscuration, 61, 62, 50 slash three. Now we're not going to talk about that today, but if you do want to do a Google search based on your purpose, make sure that you include the full sentence. Make sure you include left angle cross and make sure you include all of the numbers because it is important that you include that. So if you want to Google your purpose just for some brain candy in the future, you're more than welcome to, but I just invite you to make sure that you Google the whole thing. Incarnation cross, left angle cross of obscuration, 61, 62. 50 slash 3. All right, let's get into this. I want to start by saying that this is a human design overview. This is not a foundational analysis. A foundational analysis is very particular. Um, I just need to make that differentiation that this is an overview. An overview allows us to go through the most juicy details of what your chart brings, what pops out and it's always divided into two different parts. How you say yes and no, part one, and part two, everything else, brain candy. So part one is really all you have to know because part two only rings true if you do number one. So number one is understanding how you say your yes and no. That's what we're gonna run over first. And then part two is extras, brain candy. Once again, we don't even necessarily need to know these because if you are saying your yes and no in your life for who you are as a person, they're naturally going to, are going to be true anyways. The brain candy is just knowing what it is, right? So we don't need to know about it. We just live it. And honestly, um, I choose to not dig into the severe information about what my incarnation cross is personally because the only way that you can live your incarnation cross and which means that you live your purpose is to to say your yes and no that's it you don't have to do anything else if you get your brain involved and say, well, I know that the left angle needs to do this, and I know that obscuration means this. So for my purpose, I'm going to have to make these strategic mind, uh, yeah, these mind strategies to help me get me more close to my trajectory in life. No, that's not how it works. I prefer not to know my purpose in life because then the brain candy of what my purpose is stays out and I can just live my life how it's supposed to be lived by just saying yes and no which is really cool, but I guess like a lot of people want to know who, what their purpose is. I looked at it, so I can't see why other people wouldn't want to look at it either. We're just running over um, basic details right now. We haven't gotten into anything that you need to actually know yet. Nap time with Shereen. Regarding all of the fancy little words that are coming down this side here. We're going to explain everything here. We're going to run over everything. But what I want to say about these two parts here, which we'll run over in our brain candy section, is that even if you do choose to Google profile and incarnation cross, you may not recognize it. Because a lot of us are so far, sorry, 99.9999% of us aren't on our trajectory or have made decisions to throw us off our trajectory. So we may not recognize what this profile actually is. That's not me. That's not me. I, I'm not that at all. So I just want people to understand that if you do choose to Google this information for more brain candy later, 
you don't resonate with it, it doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just possibly means that there's a lot of different choices that you need to make in order to get yourself on the proper trajectory. Because I didn't resonate with mine and I've been on this path for years and I probably only started to resonate with mine on a conscious level probably last year. So let's hop into information. This is part one. What does nap time witchery need to know in order to know everything she needs to know about human design? And that is saying her yes and no. What does yes and no look like in human design? Yes and no looks like strategy and authority, a choice mechanism, whatever you want to call it, response mechanism. But in human design, we call it strategy and authority. So it doesn't matter who we're speaking to, who we're doing analysis for, the response or choice mechanism or the yes or no understanding comes from your strategy and authority. So we're going to probably call strategy and authority instead of choice mechanism, just so that you can understand that there'll be a change in the jargon. So I'm going to repeat it again. If you follow your yes and no, or if you follow your strategy and authority, you will allow your purpose to flow through you if you follow them. That's pretty cool. Your strategy and authority is your yes and no. But first, let me tell you that you are a generator. On a conscious level, you're not supposed to understand that. That's just like me calling you Sagittarius, Taurus, Cancer. You know, as a collective, we understand that those things exist. But for a trained astrologer, we know that there's more information behind that. So... On, on the collective level, we're not necessarily supposed to understand what generator means, but you're supposed to hear it. You are a generator. That's all you're supposed to know about that. You are a generator. But as a generator, you are here to respond with your sacral. Let's take the next 10 minutes and run over what that means for you. Nap time witchery. I understand this energy quite well because we kind of share a lot of the same energy. So it feels like I'm going to be talking to myself right now. Your energy says, uh -huh, or uh, uh, just like those caveman sounds, maybe a baby type sounds like, Ooh, when you see something you like, or eh, when you don't like something. So generators are gifted with this response mechanism, these guttural sounds of uh-huh and uh-uh and ooh and ah. Uh. And if you don't know, then maybe you just don't know. And the answer is, uh, -huh. and that's okay. And maybe the answer that you got is, ah, uh, and that is an I don't know as well. And that's okay. Maybe the way the person asked you, or maybe that the way that you're responding to it, maybe you just don't know at this moment. And that's okay. Maybe in 20 minutes you will know. So let's talk about response. Aha, uh -huh, uh -uh, comes right from your gut. A lot of people are deconditioned away from that in society. A lot of people lose touch with that because I know my parents said, slap on the hand, say your yes and no. Don't even say yeah, because that's incorrect. Don't say nah, that's incorrect. Make sure you say yes and no. Societally, that is, or in society, that is correct. So generators lose touch with their response mechanism. So sometimes people don't even have that connection to that response that's been gifted to them because they've been deconditioned away from it at a young age, told that it's not correct, even though it is correct for them. When we're talking about a response mechanism, aha, uh -huh, uh -uh, 
those caveman sounds, those baby sounds, those gift of sounds that you're given in, those, in that gut. It's giving you proper indication if you have the energy to partake or not. Ooh. Yeah, you should. Ah, yeah, you should. <laughs> eh. Uh-uh. No, you shouldn't. If by chance someone's in your aura and you naturally see yourself walking towards them, that's a key indicator. That's your body responding that you possibly feel safe around this person or they're good for you or they have something to offer you. And if you are in the aura of someone else and you see yourself walking away or like taking a step away when they take a step into you, that's a clear indication of you needing to step away from that person as well. Your body is giving you these responses in, these, in the moment that you can trust. Maybe you can see or smell that this person is skeezy, a liar. You just respond that that's who they are. Your body is telling you stuff. It's in your energy to be able to determine those things about people. <laughs> Skeeziness, liars, tell people, well, be able to smell when people aren't being truthful. I know, smell. <laughs> Weird. Your energy has this safety mechanism. You particularly, not necessarily everybody, but you particularly, me particularly, because we have access to other things in our chart, but that's just going into jargon. But you have this aha uh -huh and aha uh -huh that you've been gifted and safe for you. So let's talk about that a little bit deeper. What is a response? A response isn't a question that you are asking yourself in your head. Is this right for me? Is this experience right for me? Is this place right for me? Is this person right for me? You know, those aren't questions that we should be asking ourselves. It's actually our body that's going to be giving us the answer when you come into contact with this person, place, thing, or experience. Are you responding like ooh and ah? Or are you feeling like that repulsion of like moving away from them or ugh? Ugh. What response are you getting from that person, place, experience, or event? Just because you once were responding aha uh -huh, to something, it doesn't mean that you will always respond to it. I mean, contracts end sometime, and that's okay. Let's talk about response even more, though. What is a response? It's not a question that we're asking ourselves. It's allowing the environment to cue us to see if that's what we want to partake in or not. So let's dig into that. As a streamer, there's plenty of frilly things that could pass by and I could get distracted by, ooh, piece of candy. Or, ooh, I need different sound in my background. Ooh. I like this uh, book of answers. Ooh, I like doing quick reads. Ooh, <laughs> you know, there's so many different shiny and frilly things that a person can utilize as a streamer. You know, different broadcasting equipment, different things. You know, there's so many different frilly things that we could think that we want to do. Oh, wait, where did I start with that? Yeah, so... What I do is that if something intrigues me or I respond like, ooh, yeah, aha, uh -huh. um, oh my God, I'm kind of like mixing up what I was saying. There's a lot of things that I think I want to do and then there's a lot of things that my body, when it just passes on by, it's like, mm-hmm, I'm going to do that. So what I do is that I end up writing down all of these things that I find shiny and freely into a book. The book of answers. Um, I need to change my YouTube banner. Um, like, these are all things that have come into my head. I want to start dual streaming. 
which I have eventually responded to starting over a three month period and I am currently dual streaming. Um, you know, there's just many different freely things that could come by. So I write them down just because I find them freely and interesting. Now it doesn't mean that it has to be externalized or even acted on. Yeah. I responded to it. Why is it because I think what people it's what people want? Well, I don't know if that's really true or not until I allow the proper time for the externalization to happen or not. I'm getting way too deep before I'm even finished explaining what a response is. I'm sorry. Um, what is the response? It's not a question being asked for, from our head, but if you do find, find freely things, I write them down. What is the response? It is an outsider, environmental cue, a person cueing you to do something or not. And how do you respond to doing it? So you notice that my cat was just meowing. I respond to doing nothing. He's not annoying enough yet that I'm not going to do anything about it. If he starts meowing excessively, I am going to respond to moving him to the bathroom. Um, so that was not necessarily even anything that a person cued me to do or anything that I planned on doing. My cat just happened to start meowing and I am responding to, oh, I may have to do something about that or not. But I'm not responding to doing it right away because he may quiet down or not. So um, a response could be maybe my cat pooped and I can smell the poop bubbles in the air and I instantly respond to getting up and cleaning it so that I don't have to munch on poop air, air particles in the air. Um, maybe my fiance wakes up and he starts farting and coughing and um, banging doors and I just respond to instead of yelling at him I just go ahead and shut my doors. I respond to getting up because both of my doors are open right now. He's still asleep, but I respond to having them open right now so I can let the cats pass through. And if things get loud, I respond to possibly shutting the door in the future if it has to happen, happen. So, you know, they're environmental cues. I am working moment by moment, seeing if something needs to be done or not. I am not overthinking um, any particular moment you know I just know that Mady's still in bed so I'm just gonna leave the doors open if he's up and he's loud I'll fix it or not you know there was no overthinking there um, I didn't plan on keeping the doors open it just happened you know um, so I respond in the moment um, I don't necessarily plan to make things happen <laughs> Um, a response could possibly be an internal cue, but not from the mind. So maybe you, you are standing near someone and for absolutely no reason at all, you find yourself taking steps back from them, come to find out three weeks later that this person took advantage of the other person that you were with. So your, bo your body naturally took steps away and you didn't know why, but you chose to listen to it by staying away because you naturally moved away from it. You can't ask your body to naturally move away from something again. That's getting the brain involved. So that's just like asking your heart to beat that beat that it <laughs> was beating six beats ago. No, that was its own unique beat and we go on, right? So your body is giving you these natural cues in the moment. You might see me sometimes start to pick my lips live. That's my natural indication of, well, you're checking to see if your lips are dry, you must be dehydrated. So that when my hands go to my lips, I take a drink. That's my response. My hands must be going to my lips for a reason, checking to see how much dead skin's on my lip. I must be dehydrated, right? So. 
these natural movements that you are having in your body nap, uh, nap time with Trey are keeping you safe. So let's just say that <laughs> here's a fucking example. Uh, I drove home late on Saturday night and I chose the new way. And this is the first time ever I have given myself motion sickness as a driver ever, I believe. But I believe it's also my body keeping itself safe. I had to stop three different times and pull over because of motion sickness. And it took a minute or three each time I stopped to feel better before I started driving again. I honestly believe that that was my body keeping me safe. What if there was a moose on the road? What if there was a drunk driver on the road that I didn't know about? Why was my body so violently freaking ill for the first time ever? And I've never experienced anything like that ever. So I personally believe that my body was trying to keep me safe when I had motion sickness that night, purposely trying to delay me because of something possibly in the future on the road that I needed to be saved by. Here's another example. I, When I was younger, I never wore a belt when I drove my car because I got the bad habit from my parents. One day I wore my belt and guess what? That day I fucking got in an accident and my face didn't end up in the freaking windshield because of it. Why did I wear a belt that day? I don't know, but I did and my face didn't end up in the windshield. So if your body is naturally allowing yourself to move through mo moments, you should really listen to it because your body is responding to keeping you healthy in that time with dream. I know those were exaggerated experiences, but let me give you an example. Um, let's just say... I was running towards my um, pool. It's summer, it's heated, and I run towards the pool and I'm like, no, 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 no. But I still jump into the pool and I stay in as long as I possibly can because I haven't seen my friend in so long and her dad's there and her mom's there and they're all having fun and I'm just gonna stay in even though my body's screaming no. Long story short, I stood there in tension like my muscles like tense for three hours and I actually the only way that I could get rid of feeling so tense was to stay in the shower a really really long time and because I I was so tense for so long because I was hanging out with my friends still um before I could shower um it made me tired so my body running towards the pool was already saying no don't do it but I went against it and it was telling me that this is not for you and I'm going to keep you safe from not going in. But my brain wanted fun. I wanted to have more socialization and it ended up screwing up the rest of the day because I was so tired from being so cold, from being so tense for three hours straight that I just had to sleep the rest of the day. So let's just say that you're walking towards your bedroom and you stop and eat a salty peanut. Maybe your body needed some salt. Maybe your body needed some fat. Maybe your body needed some protein. Maybe it needed a combination of all three. But you inadvertently or unconsciously picked up a few peanuts, tossed them in your mouth, and you kept on going. Maybe by the time you get to your bedroom or whatever the heck you were doing, you're like, why am I even eating this? <laughs> you know? Why did I even stop at the, the fridge for a drink of water or a drink of C, uh, vitamin C um, when what I actually went to do was to go, to go change a shitty diaper right why it doesn't matter what what happens in the brain as to why is your body naturally moving towards those it's keeping you safe and if you don't listen to those instantaneous moments like it could be detrimental to your health and it's not too often that I say that to people. 
the chart that I read before, I didn't say that to them because they don't have access to that instantaneous knowing in the moment like you do. Your body is here to keep your, you safe. You have this connection here to keep you safe on top of knowing what's right for you as experiences, which is nice. Um, just, yeah, no, I don't know enough about human design to be able to ask that question. It was just a curiosity question, but let's move on to this response mechanism still. We're still talking about it. Uh-huh, uh-uh, and uh. -huh. Well, I was just talking about those instantaneous responses in the moment where your hand just naturally reaches for something before your brain even does anything about it. You know, your hand's already reaching for the peanuts before you're like, why am I reaching for peanuts? Um, you have this natural response in the moment. You're going to move towards things that are healthy for you or not on top of your uh-huh and uh-uh. I do too. Let's talk about what a response could be. You wake up in the morning. Why? Why did your eyes pop open? Why? Why? Did you respond to hearing your phone going off and off and off? Did you respond to the kiddos being awake a little bit earlier than expected? Did you respond to your bladder being full and you have to race to the washroom? Why did you wake up? Why did you respond? Are you to having your eyes open? Are you finished being rested? <laughs> You're a mom. You're never rested. Why did your eyes pop open? You responded to something. Well, you responded to your bladder being full, so you choose that you respond to, it's going to burst if I don't go now because I've been procrastinating it way too long because I'm... I just liked my comfy sleep. Um, so now I respond to taking the blankets off of me, but because it's becoming fall, I respond to it being a little bit more chillier in the room than I really storm. I'm responding to being agitated now. <laughs> um, I forget where I was. respond right bed so you respond to taking the blankets off of you but because it's chilly you know your body's like ooh that's a response <laughs> so you're like well I respond to putting on a sweatshirt before I go to the washroom because we haven't turned on our heater yet it's too early in the season we wait till Thanksgiving so these are all response mechanisms. You can see some of them were um, body cues, and some of them were well. I'm gonna be bored, so I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring my uh, phone. So it was a combination of a bunch of them. Maybe somebody asked you a question, and they're like, "Hey, do you want to go to the store?" And you're already up and leaving before your body. Or brain even says, uh-huh. These are all different examples. So you're already moving towards that answer before your brain even says, uh-huh. Or your brain even has a chance to uh, get into it. So your body is going to give you responses before your brain might even do so. And so far, we have learned that she is a generator that has this response mechanism in the moment that will keep her safe. Understanding their aha uh -huh and aha, uh -uh, those caveman sounds, those guttural sounds, those baby-like sounds that were gifted to her to help her make decisions towards the things that she wants to do. Now, when she understands her aha uh -huh and aha, uh -uh, those caveman sounds, all of those guttural sounds that escape her mouth, um, if she decides to follow that uh-huh, or if she decides to follow that uh-uh when it comes out, then she will allow her purpose to flow through her. Her purpose is the incarnation cross. 
let's say that a different way. If you respond and you follow that response, uh-huh, uh-uh, you allow your purpose to flow through you. Let's say that a different way. If you have, you know, your choice mechanism give you an answer, uh-huh, and you decide to follow it, or uh-uh, and you decide to follow it, you are making proper choices for you in life. And when you make proper choices for you in life, then you are allowing your trajectory or your purpose to flow through you. So that uh-huh and uh-uh is guiding you through your trajectory in life, which is also known as your purpose. We talked about how aha uh -huh and ah uh -huh was a possibility. What if we do the opposite of what our choice mechanism is telling us to do? So let's just say our body told us, aha, uh -huh, do it. But you decided not to do it because there's a million different reasons why people choose not to do something. That is going against your trajectory, which means that if your body said, uh-huh, and you do, uh-uh, you're taking a step away from your trajectory. You are doing what is called not self. So if your body said, uh-uh, don't do it, and you do it anyway, that's not self. Not self might bring us in frustration. You might find yourself frustrated because if you follow it, you're allowing your purpose to flow through, but if you don't follow it, you're allowing frustration to flow through. As a generator, the key not self theme is frustration. What does that even mean? Nap time retreat. So over here in the intuitive realm, it's expected that people might push down anger, frustration, disappointment, etc. And expect to say things like love and light, namaste, etc. People are conditioned to feel like they should not be frustrated with life, that somebody else has it better, you know, or has it worse. People feel like if they're angry that they are not allowed to be angry and that they should push it away. But that is just society speaking. In my opinion, if you are frustrated with something, it is a key indicator that something needs to change because you're not doing you somehow. How did it get to the point where, why, as to why you're frustrated? I mean, I don't know, but what can you now do to allow that frustration to subside? Generators, you are here to respond to life. And when you don't respond to life, you might end up with some frustration. 70% of chat and viewers and rerunners and lurkers watching this, you are a generator, 70% of you, which means that 70% of my chat right now is frustrated with something, not just nap time witchery. Well, what are you frustrated with nap time witchery? What are you frustrated with chat? Those are the places in your life where something needs to change. So in my level, or in my opinion, the not self theme is an up level indicator of how can we get you more on your trajectory? So if a person does say I'm frustrated with everything, what needs to change in order for that to, to for that frustration to change? Now, just because frustration is involved, it doesn't mean you need to start something or stop something. Maybe something needs just to change. And how does a person going go about that? You know, we can make a lot of strategies in our brain as to what we possibly could do about our frustration. But what you really need to do is respond to life. What in that moment can you do? What have you responded to doing? about that frustration in that particular moment. Maybe there's a lot of room for a person um, 
to have up levels in life or to be more on their trajectory. If they do say they're frustrated with everything, I wouldn't be disappointed with that sentence of, I'm just frustrated with life. You know, I don't believe that that's something to be disappointed with. It's just what needs to change so that you're not frustrated anymore. Where can there be more satisfaction in life? Yeah, so if you find yourself frustrated, maybe the thing that you did respond to saying, uh-huh, and um, originally, like maybe you were super, it was super proper for you to start with, but now it's making you frustrated. Frustrated means that something needs to change. So maybe you did enter the contract properly, but now maybe the contract needs to change. Or maybe the contract no longer suits you anymore. So the contract has to stop. So um, just because you started something properly, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be something that's forever in your life, which is okay. Um, and frustration. Frustration is your key indicator of the things that really need to have a look at. So has a contract gone on too long? Does the contract need to change any? How can the contract change to appease both parties? The opposite of frustration is satisfaction. I just want you to take a moment to see where you're satisfied in life because that's the opposite of frustration for a generator. Where are you satisfied in life? And if you can't Ooh, at work, there you go. You know what? I would hook on to that satisfaction that you feel there and everything else that seems to be frustrating. Kind of chip away at each one and have your the thing that makes you feel satisfied be the foundation of it all. Because to me, that was a very grounding point. You know? It's easy to work at things that are frustrating when there's also things that are satisfying around. You're a generator. You're here to say, aha uh -huh, and uh-uh. You have this instantaneous movement in the moment that will keep you safe and following it would be very beneficial for you. Whether it be people, places, or things, if you're moving towards them naturally or moving away from them naturally without even having that aha uh -huh or uh-uh involved. You have a safety mechanism included in your aha uh -huh and uh-uh, which is super awesome. So I'm going to ask you, Naptime Witchery, and chat one more time. Where are you frustrated in life? What has to happen so that satisfaction is more of the, the feeling that you're feeling in that particular experience? Which means that just because you're frustrated, it doesn't mean that something needs to start or stop. Maybe something just needs to change. Maybe the kid just needs to put the fucking flute away at dinner. Let's go into more of some of the things that are included in the brain candy. <clears throat> Let's talk about your profile and your incarnation cross. If you want to Google it, you're more than welcome to. But <clears throat> I do want to say that a person needs time with their strategy and authority or their choice mechanism in order to feel like themselves, Because like I said earlier, 99.99999% of people are their not self. And even if a lot of people are on their true trajectory, they still experience not self expressions. But a person needs time to understand who they truly are saying yes and no. For these profile and incarnation cross to really feel like they're true on a conscious level. So if you go ahead and Google them and they don't feel true, that's fine. It's okay. That happened to me. It doesn't need to, on the intellectual level, feel true. What needs to happen is that you need to respond, uh-huh and uh-uh, or use those guttural caveman sounds or baby sounds in order to move you through life. And that'll naturally allow you to be put on that path. And then maybe one day you might go and look at it and be like, yo, that is so me. 
I didn't resonate with my incarnation cross up until about a year ago. And I've been on this pattern or this journey for a while, right? And I've been working at deconditioning away things in life that I no longer wanted. So I've been working at it a while and I never really recognized my purpose as like, yeah, I'm actually living it now. Um, but of course, like I said, I have not self-expressions. But long story short, if you Google it and you don't recognize it and you're like, this isn't me, I did the same. But the only way to understand your purpose in life is to be you. And a lot of us aren't us because condition themes have changed us. You know, trauma has changed us. Society has changed us. Race has changed us. Um, gender has changed us. Roles in our community has changed us. Going to school has changed us. Having partners have changed us. Human design reminds us of who we are. It gives you the opportunity to get back to who you are so that you can be satisfied with life. Let me tell you a little bit about what your profile is, though. Either way, <laughs> I love your profile. It's great. I mean, I love everybody's profile. But profile, uh, you're here to be a role model of the call. What call? The one you've responded to. There's going to be a lot of people calling you out on life, in life. And that could be good or bad from their end. But a, a lot of people see your mastery and, and all the different things that you do. And a lot of people are going to be calling you out on it. But you need to make sure that you respond to your proper call. Your role model of your call. What call? The one that you respond to. Now what's interesting is that Profile usually doesn't feel true until we're living our purpose. So the profile, this is what, like, this is your costume that you wear on the stage of life. So if you were on the Broadway, the stage of life, let's just say you're six foot two. <laughs> just, that's by chance. Let's just say you're six foot two. And you need, you need a costume for your six foot two self. But they give you a costume for someone who is four foot seven. If you try to get into that costume, it's going to feel uncomfortable. It might break. It may not even fit, might not even get on you. So um, this is where I feel like my insecurities and my body came from. Because I was my lightest weight and I hated myself. My brain thought it would be different. I would feel different, yada, yada. I lived my life truly as me for a couple of years beyond that, probably six or seven years. And then I actually, through depression and anxiety, I gained like 60 or 70 pounds. And because I was actually living my life as myself, I found love and comfort within my body as well. Um, not just on the exterior, because I always felt like I was pretty. I just never felt comfortable inside my body, ever. So I feel like this is where that came from for me, is that I was trying to fit into a costume that didn't belong to me. And when I started to, you know, I was a character on the stage of life who was me. They realized it was me. They made the proper costume. Now it's fitting properly. It feels darn good. So... You're a role model of the call. That is your profile in life. Whether you are, whether you see that as yourself, people see this as you. And people are going to be calling you out for it. Let's get into some of the fun stuff. This is what your body's doing. This is what your brain thinks it's doing. Here's your purpose. Your incarnation cross. Sorry, this is your chart. This is your purpose. And this is what you look like when you sleep or lay down or have sex. A tick in the 53 or in the 1. I think it's going to be the 53 though. But yeah, I just 
those are the type of people that you might feel most conditioned to have around you um, as your weak point. Okay, I'm going to do this a few different ways. So the coloredness in your chart, that is who you are. So you have a fixed way of expressing uh, proper timing um, and adrenaline. So you know your proper timing. You know when um, what is healthy for you or not. People, places, or things. You know when enough is enough. You have a fixed way of identifying with love, direction, and identity in life. And you have a fixed way of accessing your willpower or heart center. I know that's a bunch of jargon, but what's interesting is that the mind likes to think that everything that you are is boring. Why would I want to be me? That's boring. I want to be something I'm not. <laughs> so it likes to hop on to everything that is white in the chart. And it tries to be all the white parts in the chart. Now, you, you can play here. You can have fun with this, but don't identify with it as you because it's not. So when the body tries to identify as these parts being you, I can tell you what the expression is. When a person, the brain just likes to think that I need to fill in the blanks here and there's no problem with you having these open. Your chart is perfect the way it is. You're beautiful. You're exactly the way you should be. You're awesome. You're amazing. There's nothing wrong with the white parts in your chart. So the not self expression here is I may not know what to find interesting or I may take on work of others. So I know you are working in a particular shop. Now that I see this, I see that you might be expressing a not self expression. I don't believe that you're a manager of this shop. You have a frontline position, but you are doing managerial work. You are trying to seek out answers as to why this business is only here instead when it needs to be here. So you're taking on all of this mental extra work that actually doesn't even belong to you when it's actually someone else's business and someone else's job to seek out new opportunities where you're supposed to be making sure that everything inside the building runs smoothly. You are here to have paint with me's, to sell and to greet customers and to in enter new customers into your system. So a not self expression is taking on other people's work, possibly to prove that you know, or maybe just because you're a nice person, or maybe because it has to do with this particular center here. <laughs> but um, it's actually a combination of a lot of them and we'll talk about it and it's no offense at all. It just is when we're in our not self, we're avoiding confrontation and truth. So this is what this one does. So, you know, the manager is your friend. You want to do what's nice for her and you don't want to upset her. You want to make her happy. You want to avoid the the truth of the possibility of the whole shop shutting down if it isn't going to succeed. So, you know, you might be confronting some truths of, you know, this isn't what wor isn't working. This isn't what what's working. I see. I just don't know the whole scenario, but avoiding confrontation or truth, or you could be telling too many truths. So you know what's wrong, you know how to fix it, but it's not necessarily your position to fix it. It's the manager's job. Um, so when asked, you could externalize to them what is wrong, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do it. So avoiding confrontation and truth. Um, maybe you might have to confront that you might have to find a different job that you don't like. So you're willing to take on the mental work of the manager 
to get it all done so that you can still have your job because it doesn't matter you're being paid to be there anyways so you might as well be paid to like save your job so why not do the work that is required while I'm there I'm there anyway so I might as well save the shop but that's not your job exactly so then this feels pressured you are there to work you're there to be paid but it's not necessarily your job to be the marketer of the business unless that was a part of your actual job like recruitment I believe you were like the person to make everything inside the business happen and the managers everything to make everything outside the business happen so because nobody else is you feel pressured to be not self here to find all the answers to know all the answers to make sure that you can know so that you can make sure that you avoid the confrontation of what could possibly happen if the shop shuts down see how these like all interlace with one another even though it's not anything to prove about knowing you're definitely taking on the pressure of this scent so as you can see these centers really do the not selfness of all of them kind of coexist together so it's not because you want to prove that you're a know-it-all no it's you feel the pressure that nobody else is doing anything conceptually to do anything about saving this business so you feel the mental pre mental pressure to take on everything that your manager should be taking on so you can avoid the confrontation of the future so you may not be experiencing like i know to be a know-it-all but you're being pressured into a not self experience of taking on some conceptualization that shouldn't even belong to you <clears throat> and you are being forced to know so that's a not self expression so you either know or you don't that's the wisdom of the center so this one here might actually play into some of the not selfness of the business that you're working with this is to be seen or not now when i was younger i did things to be seen and i also did things to not be seen i used to dress like a boy in big baggy sh uh, pants and baggy sweaters so that people wouldn't see me because i really did feel beautiful but i didn't know how to really take it out into the world consciously and i felt uncomfortable inside how does that all work and but then like some days I'm just like, bam, I want to be a goddess. See me. <laughs> um, this is where I would end up giggling for way too long. Beyond the point, it was actually funny. So you want this business to be seen. So you are going out of your way to manifest possible circumstances that once again, your boss should be doing. It's not your job to be seen your job is to create entertainment so what's interesting is that you possibly could be the perfect employee for them because you're doing all the stuff they don't want to do and you feel pressured to do it i'm not saying that you didn't respond properly to doing it Maybe you did respond to doing it. Maybe you're going to push out the manager and you're going to be the new manager. Maybe you just felt the gap and you felt like you, you felt like you had to because nobody else was doing it. Because that is a group pressure that we do feel. So, you know, maybe you are the perfect employee because you're going to fill all the gaps nobody else is willing to fill. Maybe you'll end up taking the manager's job because you just do her job anyways. But make sure that you are responding to do the things. Because my dad always told me, you know, you're here to work. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Whether you're sweeping a floor or filling out accounting stuff, you're here to work. And that actually made people take advantage of me in the future. 
where I was in a position and people higher than me, my bosses were like, here, do this work. And I, it wasn't for me to do. It was their job. My customers were suffering because I was doing other people's work. You have a design of insatiability, the channel of judgment. You have a channel of being, a, a channel of surrender, a design of a transmitter, so you have something to say, something to transmit. You are a design of perfected form, a design of survival, and you are a channel of exploration, a design of one's, of following one's conviction, the one's convictions. Now, are you supposed to understand that on the intellectual level? No. So 70% of who you are comes through the shining light of the sun. So 61. 61 is right here in this head. And then 50. Your most not self-expression in life is going to come out of your head, especially since the shining light in your world is coming out of your head, but there's no direct connection to it. So you might find that you're taking on a lot of work of others. You might find yourself answering questions from people that don't matter. You might find yourself twirling down the, uh, or scrolling down the rabbit hole of YouTube, TikTok, or Twitch. Um, so you may not know what to do about what's here in your head. But let's talk about it. You're a role model of being, oh, so appeal is the word that comes with this word. I'm going to take out, you're not necessarily supposed to understand these words either. I only resonated with one of these words last week in mine. Um, remember, you're supposed to understand who you are as a person, uh-huh, and, uh -uh, and move into understanding you truly before you may be able to understand that this is your shining light out into the world. So appeal, the profound attunement to the collectivity that can lure the public to a truth. Inspiration that can bring clarity to the collective. So apparently that is your energy, that is your shining light out into the world. Being a role model of appeal, the profound attunement to collectivity that can lure the public to a truth. Inspiration that can bring clarity to the collective. So that's half of your shining light out into the world. And your other half of your shining light out into the world is actually connected to all of this. So it can be many things, but mainly your shining light out into the world is determination. Um, but, oh, sorry, up in the head, up in the head has to do with mystery, new, new things. So you might feel really pressured to create something that's unique, new and mysterious, and that's never been ever in existence before and to possibly be the role model of that. So, um, here is where the 50 is. So you might understand that values are important to you. Um, the tribe is important to you and that, um, it's the value of historical continuity whose traditional values serve and enrich the present and the future. Apparently that's what that one is. The cauldron. So, um, determination, the strength of purpose that can en enjoy overcoming adversity to achieve its goals. The strength derived from maintaining one's values in the face of opposition or conditioning. So that is you and you shining your light out into the world. That is your call. That is what you're here to be called to. Whatever that means to you, I'm not too sure. So you are a role model of appeal and you are called to determination. That is who you are. Yeah. So let's run over the most important part of this whole experience. None of this extra stuff matters. Going into this chart, doing any of the stuff in here, it doesn't matter. It's just a good signpost to understand who you are and who you're not. So it can kind of get you back into line with who you are, your purpose. So uh-huh and uh-uh is how you move through this experience of life. You respond to life. Uh-huh and uh-uh. You don't think about things in your head and say, yeah, I'm going to make that happen right out into the world immediately. No. 
maybe you're you think it's frilly and shiny write it down go through a list when you're bored and say oh ah no i don't want to do that one that's how i get through it so uh -huh, uh -huh, this is who you are and if you allow that uh -huh, uh -huh, and those baby sounds those guttural sounds and those bodily functions of moving away from things or pushing things away without your brain being involved and you're like why did i do that those are keeping you safe make sure you understand that those are keeping you safe and you should pay attention to them so where are you frustrated in life chat where are you frustrated in life nap time witch free that is where i'm going to start your homework is where are you frustrated in life what needs to change not necessarily quit or start but what needs to change if you allow your purpose to flow if you allow your aha uh -huh and aha uh -uh to flow through you and you follow that you're allowing your purpose to flow through you and your purpose is the left angle cross of uh, i'm struck i don't even obscuration <laughs> that's the first time i've ever seen that i've never seen that yet so that's pretty fun um yeah once again if you want to google it left angle cross of obscuration um make sure you have the numbers in there it may not make sense to you because you need to start using your aha uh -huh and uh -uh. thank you so much for letting me do this